Hi, everybody. This is Joshua Pomeroy with lesson three of our Figma design course. Today, we're going to be exploring fonts and looking at the type features inside Figma. Let's check it out. So once again, in Google Chrome, we can type in figma.com, hit enter. And if you need to log back in, use your Google account or your email, whichever you use to create your Figma account. And this will load, and now we are in Figma. We don't need any assets for this lesson. We're going to just look at type and how we can create text elements, edit text elements, and give them different fonts and styles. So first, we need a frame. Let's hit F on the keyboard, and once again, start with our Instagram post, which is 1080 by 1080. I'm going to orient my X and Y position to zero, and I can hit Shift 2 on the keyboard to zoom to the selection. Now to use the type tool, we can click right up here on the icon in the tools bar, and it also gives us the tool tip there for the shortcut key is T. That's the quickest way to grab the text tool and start using the text. So what we're gonna do is just click somewhere on our frame to create a text element. And we can see over here in the layers panel, it's created a new layer that just says text. And I want you to type in headline. Okay, now this is kind of small. We can look over here in our text panel in the over on the inspector panel or the design panel over on the right hand side. And right down here we have the text heading and underneath this we have a lot of different features and customizability. The first thing I want to do is just change the size. So right here where it says 12, we can drop this down and let's select something nice and large for a headline. Let's maybe try 64. That's a nice, good size headline, I think. We're just going to move this up here on our frame just a little bit and set it right there. Now, what I want to do is create basically three different styles or, th or three different weights and typefaces that we can use for a page layout. And this is going to help us learn both, I think, some good principles for using type in good design, as well as just kind of showcase the features and the way that we can customize type inside Figma. So once again, let's select our headline and our first default selected font is Roboto or Roboto. It is a really nice font. And if we click on this drop down where it says regular, we can see we get lots of different weights and we also have all the different weights in italics as well. And I like fonts that give you a lot of different variation in weight. And basically that's just the thickness or thinness of the typeface. As you can see, we chose black italic and now it's nice and bold and it has a lean to it. Let's keep that for our, our headline and keep this nice and simple. All right, let's now deselect or just click on our frame, then hit T on the keyboard again, and click to create a new text element. And by default, it's going to keep all of our attributes that we had applied to the last text element. So we have Roboto, we have it black italic at 64 points. We're gonna change that in a minute, but for this, just type in body or you could type in paragraph. And what we want to do is create a nice sort of hierarchy of size and weight for a good combination of typography for a page layout. So think about a web page and how you'll have headlines usually at the top of the page or at the beginning of a paragraph or blog post. And then you'll have a smaller body size that's good for reading longer paragraphs. And then sometimes you'll have footer text or smaller bits of information. And that's what we're going to create here is just a hierarchy. Now we could use the same font and just change this. Let's make it maybe regular or medium. Let's try medium. It's just a little bit heavier. And now let's change our font size. Let's make it smaller. Maybe let's try 24. And I like that size proportion there to the headline. We can line it up here with the left-hand side. We get those nice smart guides in red, but I think I like the regular better, so I'm going to change that back to regular. Now we have a even slightly larger contrast between the weight of the headline and the 
body copy. Now, the last thing that we're going to create is like a caption or small detailed font. And so again, I'm going to hit T on the keyboard and then just click on my frame. Again, we have now the last text attributes that we had applied. It's regular, it's 24. Let's change the font here. We can just click on where the name Roboto is and we can drop that down. And I just want to use Roboto Condensed. So we'll get just a little thinner typeface and it's, but it still shares a lot of the same curves and the aesthetic of the Roboto font. So it works really good together. And let's just type in something like info text. Okay. And then all you have to do is click off of the text element or onto the frame to deselect the, the text. Now we can click and move things around however we want. We get these nice smart guides. We also get guides for distance between these elements on our page. So we have a headline, we have some body copy and some info text. Let's make the info text a little bit smaller as well. Let's go back over here and change it from 24 to 14. So we have it really nice and small. Now this might be great for a web page or for maybe laying out like an article or something like that. You could make all of these maybe just a little bit bigger so it's easier to see on your frame. And we can do that by just selecting all of them. So I'm going to lasso select or just click and drag to select all of them. And we have some shortcut keys for just increasing the text size. And that is control shift and the comma and period key where you have the left and right little caret arrows and we can just use control shift holding those down and push the period key and you can see I'm increasing all of these incrementally the more that I push it and we're going to get some overlapping here but I'll fix the spacing here in just a minute. So let's get there and see where we're at now. I'm going to move these back down. Let's keep them lined up to the left-hand side. Space them out evenly. All right. So let's select the headline and see where our text size is at now. 144. Okay, I like that. Now Figma gives you some preset sizes. As you can see here, it goes from 9 to 288. But you can type in this field any text size you want. And you can also increase the size as you just saw me do with that shortcut key. You can also hit K on the keyboard, which is also in this drop down over here from on the toolbar underneath the selection. You can choose K and K will scale your text. Whereas if you were just grabbing a handle here, you'll resize the text box. And we'll get into some of those things here in just a minute. But I like to use some of these presets because they're really made for getting good contrasting sizes, especially for UI design or website design. So for my headline, I'm going to use 144. Let's see what, where my body's at. That's at 104. Let's see a closer one, maybe 96. And for the info text, let's, let's see... I'd increase that one up to 94. Let's take that one down to even maybe something smaller like 48. So again, we have the nice hierarchy, lots of contrast in size and weight. And I'm going to select all of these and then hover over the corner here. We see these three little lines. This is just going to equally space out our elements on the page. So now here's what I want you to do is create a new frame. So hit F on the keyboard. Let's choose Instagram post again. We can line this one up on our viewport and I like to nudge things over so I have 50 pixel distance, but you don't have to do that. So hold shift one, two, three, four, five with the right arrow key nudges it over 10 pixels at a time. So this is now your canvas. I want you to try choosing some fonts that you like. It uses fonts from the Google fonts repository. So there's hundreds of fonts in here to choose from. I'm going to do this again as well. And now that we have some good sizes, we can use 144 for our, our headline, around 96 for the body copy, and something smaller like 48 or below for the info text or more detailed or caption type text. So T on the keyboard, I'm working on our second frame. I'll click We'll type headline again. 
and we'll get faster and faster at just getting our text customized the way that we want. So I'm going to hit Control A to select everything in that text field. Let's change the size first to 144. And I'm going to choose a font that I like. I've made some notes, so I, I like to remember the names of fonts that I like. And one of the ones that I've been using for this series of lessons is Bangers. And I'm going to just start typing in B-A-N. And there it is, B-A-N-G-E-R-S. I can just hit Enter, and it will change it to Bangers. So there's a very different kind of font there. Let me see where this is at from the top. It's 106, and we can change this as well in the Y coordinates, 1106. So we can have these text elements lined up on our second canvas, just like we do on the first one. We can also just hold Alt and copy this text element that we just created, and then just customize this one. So I will double click to highlight the text and type in body. And for the body, I like to make sure that I type it in as sentence case or using the capital of the first letter and the rest of it being lowercase. Bangers happens to be like an all caps font. So I can select all of this now. And for body, I like to choose something that's relatively simple to read, a very clean font. And one of my favorites is Montserrat. So I can start typing in that as well. And let's click on our drop down menu and find it here. Montserrat, there it is. And let's just go back and check what size we were using for our body. It was 96. So let's select our body text on our second frame and choose 96. There we go. And let's do this one more time. We can duplicate our text element and double click to edit our text. Info, text, and control A, or we can just click off and make sure that we have our frame selected. For a more condensed, smaller font, another one that I really like is Oswald. So I can just click in the font name field and I can t start typing in Oswald. O S W, and there it is. Click enter to select Oswald. See, it's a very similar font to the Roboto condensed. And I'm going to change the size of my font. Let's go down to 48. And we can also change the weight. Maybe I'll make that light. And let's just select all of these and make sure that they are equal distance apart. There we go. So you can go through all of these different Google fonts and start coming up with combinations of typefaces and sizes that have a good hierarchy and contrast in weight, in size, and in the overall shapes of these different kinds of fonts. There's a few more things that I want to show you about using type. So far, I've aligned everything to the left. We can select, let's say, let's select our second group of fonts on our second frame here, and I can change all of these at the same time. I'm going to align them to the center. And then I'm going to make sure that these elements are aligned to the center right up here. So now we have some center text. If I want to put these three pieces of text into, into a group, I can press Control G, and that will group them. You can see over here in our Layers panel, now we have Group 1. Now I'm going to align this whole group to the center of the canvas with Alt-V and Alt-H. You can also do that with these buttons right up here. Align horizontally and align vertically center. So there's some different ways that we can position our text and format it to flow from the left side. We can also do that from the right side. I'm going to ungroup these now and show you a few more things. Now for this headline, let me select that. Our option here where it says it's the second one where it says A, and there's a percentage. If you hover over that, it says letter spacing. And you can click and drag this arrow while this double arrow is popped up and actually drag this in real time to see the spacing it will add or decrease between the letters. You can also type in a specific percentage. So maybe just three, just increase the spacing of those letters just a little bit so we can change a letter spacing. That's really great. I'm going to pull down the info text 
And I'm going to use a, something like a lorem ipsum generator. So I'm just going to open up a tab and start typing in lorem ipsum. And this will just give us a chunk of text that we can play with to show some of these features. So I'm just going to grab a paragraph here from lipsum.com. So before I paste in my lorem ipsum or just filler text, I want to change some more properties of this body. I don't want it to be a one single strand, a very long single line of text. I want it to flow in like a paragraph form. So I'm going to change this to auto height and I'm going to make the width right up here 900. Now we can see that the box is bigger than our text element and I'm going to constrain this to the horizontal center right over here. I'll talk about constraints in further tutorials. This will just make it easier for me to show you what I'm about to do. So I'm going to just move it back over and center it onto the frame. Now I think that our body copy needs to be a little bit smaller. I'm thinking if I paste in a paragraph here that's just going to be too big. So let's go ahead and go back over here and continue making some customizations. Let's take our body copy down to something like 64. And maybe instead of regular, let's make it light. Okay, now let's select our body copy here. And let's just get a couple of sentences from lipsum.com. We can just grab a couple of sentences here. Let's go down to right there. Control C. This will just give us some filler text to play with to test out some of these features. So now we have a large paragraph to see how it auto flowed downwards. Now I'm going to hit Control A and continue making my body copy a little smaller. Let's take it down to like 36. That's a little bit better. Now that'll fit in our frame a little bit better. Let's select our headline and move that up. We can hold Shift to constraint the movement. So I'm just moving it up and down and I won't accidentally move it left to right. So I keep it right in the center. And I can do the same thing with our paragraph here now. Now maybe the paragraph I'd like to align to the left hand side. So I can do that. And now maybe we can increase it. Let's try 48. That's a pretty good size for this. And I can recenter this, select it and press Alt V. You can quickly center that to the vertical center. And our info text down here, this would be a nice like Instagram post for a quote. We could put someone's name here. Let's just put in first name, last name. And because we had that centered, it's still nicely centered right there. And maybe we can select all of them again and just make sure that they're distributed equally apart. And I'll just make sure once again that they're centered on, on the canvas. So now you have a good layout for like an Instagram post, some kind of inspirational quote. You could put in a catchy headline, write in a paragraph here and have a, a tag or a caption or the person's name of the quote. This could be used for lots of different things, but you can see how we can start using the customization of type and text to start learning how to lay things out in a nice, clear way to lead the viewer's eye through our design. And that's the end of lesson three. Play with these fonts some more, maybe create another frame and try out some different font styles, sizes, weights, and make note of a few of your favorites that you might find. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.